back to another episode of Aerodynamics of Hypercars. Today we're going to be analyzing the car that was my least favorite in terms of active aerodynamics, and that is the Pagani Huayra. And most of you have probably seen this flap system that it's got going. And it's got basically variable flaps front and rear that are adjustable up, down, and you can vary them side, side. And this system, while it looks really, really awesome, and I have a feeling that a lot of the reason they did this was for the looks, aerodynamically, it's not brilliant. And I'll go into why. Just looking at this video that I've compiled from clips, mainly from Chris Harris, and then we've got a bit of Top Gear in it. And basically, you can see that he's going around these hairpins, and these flaps are not popping up until he's way down the road. Like, if you look at that, they're not popping up at all. And one could ask the question of why you would not be deploying your flaps to get downforce in your corners. If we look at the front flaps here, we can see that they largely seem to deploy while the car is braking, and that kind of makes more sense. But looking at this clip from Top Gear, we can see that they're going up and down pretty much the same. But if we look at um, it going in a corner, we can see that the inside one is actually going more. And if we look at it in this next corner coming up, again, you can see the inside one is going more. And if we look at that in terms of the actual car, we can see that this is basically what's happening. And this is the one that's deployed on the inside of the corner. Now, Pagani's logic behind this in their marketing material is that as you're cornering, if you have more downforce on the inside of the car, it will provide an aerodynamic anti-roll. And that logic is correct. But by the same token, think about it. If you are able to provide more downforce and you flatten off this flap here to get better roll characteristics, you're then losing total downforce by having this flap not working to its utmost, whereas this one is obviously going properly. This gets even worse because if you have a look, this flap is nowhere near the outside of the chassis. It's quite close in. And so the result is that the downforce torque around the center of gravity of the chassis is going to be pretty low. It's not going to have that big rotating moment around there. And that's going to kind of mean that you need a big downforce difference to make a difference. And so you'll have to lose a lot of downforce if you want to get a big difference in anti-roll. My main gripe with that is, is that cars like the P1 do this with the suspension. They have their suspension so they can control the roll stiffness so that it doesn't have issues. And Pagani says that by doing this, they can keep the floor flatter and more consistent, but why not just do it in the suspension? Why are you sacrificing downforce for no reason? It seems foolish. Like, it looks really cool though, and you tell people that it's for that reason and they'll believe it and think that it's a great system. And this is my real gripe with the system is that it's not so much that it's wrong so much as they just don't seem to be utilizing it in the most efficient way and rather seem to be utilizing it in the manner that looks coolest. This is further evidenced by those videos that I was showing you where it's going through the hairpins. Now if you're going through any corner, you want as much downforce as possible to get your grip back. Arguably, at low speed, the downforce isn't going to be as effective because your speed's lower, but by the same token, your drag isn't an issue either because you have so much power to overcome it. So why wouldn't you have these flaps the whole way up when you're operating at low speed in a high performance mode? It makes no sense to ever drop these flaps when you're at low speed if you're driving fast. If you're trying to get good fuel economy, then yeah, sure, go nuts. But the fact that in so many videos driving around hairpins and even higher speed corners, these flaps are attracted is a bit of an issue for me. If we look at this front flap, we can see that it's directly above a radiator sort of thing. And it seems that for the most of the time when it's going around a track or something like that, these seem to be in this sort of position and then they extend forward for air brakes. And the thing is, is that I don't think that extending this flap more would produce any more downforce. I think it's literally just increasing drag. If we look for a moment at the ducting that's going on in here, we can see that these radiators at the front are gonna be drawing air from somewhere down at the front lip sort of thing, and it'll be passing through and then it's coming up here. Now, if you consider how it's gonna be operating normally, the cabin's back here, this flow is going to naturally go like that. It's gonna stay attached because it's got positive pressure on it. And then, basically, this airflow is just gonna push it up a bit and fill this gap. There's no problems here, it's just providing suction from there. But if we increase this flap angle significantly up like that, we can see that this flow is just gonna get dammed up here kick over the top, and then you're going to end up with a big sort of recirculation region here. Obviously, this is going to be quite draggy. 
And initially looking at that, one may think that you would be gaining downforce by having this flap full up. But it's not so simple. This separator region is going to be quite low pressure. So you're going to end up with lift back here on this area here and probably more downforce on here. So you will end up with a slight aero balance shift forward, which is ironic because they're trying to shift the aero balance backwards in a lot of their braking scenarios to level out the car again. So from that point of view, I don't consider this front flap to be a great implementation either. There's a reason why none of the other hypercars have front flaps like this and instead focus their front active aero on the under tray here. And it's because that is where you're getting big gains. That is where your driver can see it and it looks cool. Looking at the rear flap, I found it interesting that they've actually made a sort of wing profile of this. And this is kind of ironic because it's clearing this whole area. So this bit is acting like a, essentially a lip spoiler, a movable lip spoiler. And when it's up, it wouldn't hugely matter what profile it is here. They've just kind of chosen a wing profile, I guess because it looks good, maybe structural reasons. I'm not sure, but I just found that as an interesting little thing. Just as a final note to bring in my suspension point, the Huayra does have active suspension. It pumps the front up under braking to keep the floor level. And this just baffles me because if it has active front suspension, why not just have active side-side suspension and then pump it up side-side if you're supposedly using your aerodynamics to control the roll? It, it's just really confusing as a thing. And this is what frustrates me about the car. I love how it looks. I love it's, how cool it is and everything. But it annoys me how much they say that this is good for the active aerodynamics when in reality, they could have done a whole lot better. And this is why it's last on the list of my hypercars for active aerodynamics. Thanks for watching. Feel free to be annoyed in the comments section below and hopefully enjoy the other videos.